The Heights. My wife of three years told me three months ago we were over, out of the blue. We have been together nearly eight years and have two young children. I'm 37, she is 32. We had moved into our new house that she had longed for because we were looking for the forever home. We moved in November but after we moved, she was behaving very distant and unhappy. After a lot of confrontations, she told me she didn't love me anymore. She said she had felt like it for a long time. I did all the classic mistakes of being needy, pleading which pushed her further away to the point she decided to move out with the kids into a rented house. This was one month ago. Since then, I have found another guy who she works with has been around a couple of times, not stayed over, and she has stayed over at his, once so far, but has claimed nothing has happened but she is unsure how she feels about him but she claims she is being open and honest about it because she cares about me. During the time she told me it was over she has either text random stuff to me or called me daily. I went away over the weekend and I didn't call about the kids as I just wanted to have a break. She told me when I got back on Sunday that she had been waiting all day for me to call her about the kids. I kind of lost it with her yesterday and started the begging and pleading and obviously want to save our marriage but she has said point blank. I don't love you and don't want to go back to the same relationship. She said it would be okay for two weeks then I would go back to how I was so it is definitely over. It got a bit heated and I stormed out because our children were next to us and she was raging at me. She then sent me four texts after saying I need to tell her when I'm having the kids and storming out isn't solving anything. Then she asked me to call after I didn't reply to any of them. I did call and we were on the phone for about an hour but she persisted that we are over and she needs to move on. So, I'm really confused by it all, why text me and call me, but then be so horrible to me and cold. I do love her dearly but she always throws it back saying you have only started showing love because she has left etc. and she shouldn't have to tell someone how to behave which is why she can't be with me. She has removed her rings deliberately about five weeks ago. She has reeled off a list of pretty lame reasons to end the marriage, such as not cooking her dinner. I've obviously made things worse by losing it with her over this other guy so more damage has been done. Clearly I have things to work on and change but so does she however she is unwilling to give it a chance and blames it all on me. She wanted this house more than anything, then said she didn't like it after moving in. I didn't buy it though, it's lovely. Problem is she doesn't earn much and moved to a house we used to own which she now rents however after my talks the other day. She is now looking to move again just after one month, more rent and again the children are dragged around to basically get away from me. I'm not sure she has cheated yet, purely because she never has the time. She had the kids most days and nights because I leave early for work. She's lost all her family over it. They are fuming with her behavior. I do sometimes think she is suffering from depression. I'm not sure she is as deep in love as it sounds. I know he has popped round after work but then has left however she said she wants to move on and anything can happen. I'm doing the best I can from today to not talk about the marriage, nor this other guy. The main issue I have is I see her every other day because of the kids so I have no choice but to talk to her. Today it was just general chit chat but mainly about the kids, then she left. So hard. Okay firstly, the point about her staying at this guy's house, this was because he had invited her out for dinner and some drinks. I know she didn't get wasted because first thing the next day she was messaging about the me and the kids, saying she hoped we have a nice day. She had the whole day to stay with him if she wanted to but she went shopping around midday. He's invited her out again so she tells me, so again I'm guessing she will be going over to his no doubt. But whatever, he is single, 10 years older than her and has no kids. I've met him a couple of times on her work occasions. I'm under no illusion that there's more to it and the comments about her keeping me in the background make sense. Financially, she's not asking me for a penny, she's moved out and doing it all alone. She wants me to make sure I can keep the house so the kids have a future. I know I have to accept it's over, she doesn't love me. Over here we don't have to file for separation, you just do it which she has done. She has suffered from depression various occasions and has low self-esteem. I will be following the 180 though, she can't be keeping me hanging. Over here to file for divorce we have to wait two years after the separation otherwise it's very expensive. She's never once mentioned about divorcing me though. Update, she's gone away again tonight, apparently to another girl's house who she works with. The random calls continue until it's time for her to go away. I know I've been played but tomorrow is a different story. A month later, well, my wife of three years told me back in December, she no longer loved me and told me it was over. It was a massive shock as we had just moved into our beautiful home a few weeks beforehand. We have two young children, five and four. She wasn't willing to even attempt to sort things, she said it was already too late. Her reasons were that she felt unappreciated, taken for granted etc. She moved out into rented accommodation in February with the children. During this time there was another man who I know was interested in her and started going around to see her occasionally and she started going over to his once a week whilst I had the kids. She informed me that he was purely a friend who she could talk to. She told me two weeks ago that he has asked to move things forward as they get on well and wants to form a relationship with her. She said she wanted to think about it as she wasn't sure. Anyway, we had a long chat over the weekend during the kids swap. She basically said she is interested in seeing how things go with this man but wants to take it very slow. 
She has also said she has told this man that she wants to still go and have drinks with me and do family days out. Apparently he is fine with it. We are also getting on well at the moment as it's the first time we have been able to talk properly since all this started in December. For example, she came round yesterday and spent nearly two hours talking about her and the kids and her issues in the rented accommodation. I don't know what to do, part of me thinks I should tell her to go away but the other part of me thinks I should just let this fantasy relationship burn itself out and continue to build our relationship back up without pushing her away. She says she really cares about me and wants me in her life but she just doesn't have the love feelings for me. I've just called her and told her to either end it now or she will lose me. She said I was being controlling to make her choose and I'm no friend to her for doing it. I said if she was a true friend wouldn't have been going over to his house when she moved out after I had already told her that it was disrespectful. She's not interested in working anything out. This was the initial problem. She refused to work on anything and acting like a whirlwind moving out. No care for me or the children. My only issue with all this is it's like forcing her to be with me. I just want her to be with me because she loves me but I realize that is another issue to work on. She is clearly a selfish person. She's even today said she's afraid of me because what I could be capable of. The truth is, it's just a cop out because I'm hurting her by telling her a few home truths and she can't accept it. But whatever, I'm in no way abusive or ever have been. I've already told her countless times that I understood my issues and where I went wrong the marriage. I've had a lot of time to reflect on it. However, the only thing she has said she could have done better was to communicate with me. She never really said much about what the issues were until the end. I can tell you though she has always been an argumentative person, gave me crap about silly things and always played the victim card. Just so you know, I'm from the UK and our rules on divorce are different here. To divorce we have to go through steps first such as marriage counseling before they will even consider it. It's also very costly. Since I told her to get lost she's now ignoring me. I text her just to ask if she had picked the kids up from school as it was normally my turn. She didn't reply but later I had one say yes, she had picked them up. Too late then, I didn't reply back. I've accepted she has most likely slept with this joke of a man on several occasions. The more I think about of whereabouts at certain points in time over the past few months it all adds up. He is single, 40, no kids and lives on his own. She has the children six nights a week. She has one night to herself either a Friday or a Saturday. She lives down the road from me so I know if he's there or not. I've not seen his car there for a few weeks. Last weekend, the night she could have gone over, she was with me asking this stupid crap about permission to go with him. She then later went to a mutual friend's house, female and male, and was dropped back late. I know because I dropped her off there and she couldn't drive due to drinking too much. The house is complicated, I don't have the money to sell immediately, it is in both our names and joint mortgage so she is much responsible as I am. I'm out of that fog now. Since I started the 180, two days ago, we have not talked at all. Even last night when she collected the kids, she did not speak one word to me however I did say hello to be polite. I'm no longer going to be her go-to when she is complaining about her immune disease or anything. I will keep it purely about the children. I can see that the whole affair is fantasy. There's no way he would commit to selling his house to live with her and the kids. She's an idiot. I am in talks with my parents about the next steps to moving forward, the house and divorce. One thing I forgot to mention, both our families know about this, I've told them everything. Her mum is very ashamed of her and are no longer talking, she will have no one left. My comment, you are carrying this false hope that she is not sleeping with him. If you read any of the literature, women in affairs that tell their husbands they want to date both of you, open marriage, very rarely are our material unless they are given no time to stall and getting kicked off the fence. The longer you sit there and play nice guy the more her feelings grow for him and since she has you pining away hoping for the best there is no rush for her to make any decisions. You have yourself convinced that she cannot find time to be sneaking to see him. That is not a very smart position to take with no way to verify it, and if she is moved out or still talking to him, which you apparently have no clue of, then you know nothing factual. You are not going to get out of this without some harsh action and you start with ending her cake eating immediately, and if she refuses handing her divorce papers, you can stop that any time you want to. Story 2. The Recovering One. We're doing everything right. We are mad hatters. We are living our lives, very loving to each other. Yet sometimes I feel like we pay too big of a price, and our marriage wasn't that bad before. We have done MC and IC and there isn't much more to talk about. I get frustrated because the two O still live where we live. I guess I thought if we both worked really hard, we'd have something great and wonderful at the end. And we do. But there is a cloud over everything. And that part I hate. We all live in the same town. One works 100 yards from him. He's supposed to tell me if he sees her but he says he doesn't look. No contact with them. Yes, they are married and yes, all was exposed. We've been married 28 years. Four kids. All grown. My affair was five years ago. His were three years ago. All affairs were short. I confessed. He was caught twice. I also busted. Him in NC once, but it was business related. I would kick him out if it or any lie of omission happened now. But I trust him now. I just wish it hadn't happened. 
He won't move because he has sacrificed enough for this marriage. OM, he moved four hours away. We are both satisfied but would maybe like to be more satisfied. There is nothing left to talk about in counseling. We accept what we have or don't. I told him everything. He believes me. But we have talked about everything already, many times. That's what I mean. He says for me to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm very open, transparent, painfully honest with him. Om was exposed wisely yes. My husband confronted OM many times and pretty much ran him out of town. I'm glad for that. I exposed O1 to work, spouse, family and then got a call from the police to knock it off. I exposed O2 to spouse. What is difficult with that one of us that I caught him on top of her at a park, making out. How he thinks it's in for me to see her ever is beyond me. However, we do okay, as long as I don't see them. We do fun things together, just bought a lake home, and everything else good. I think you guys are right in that with three affairs. I was also ex during this time, awful for both of us, that we have a lot to heal from. Hubby and I are traveling to a football game where his family lives. They can be difficult, and we have both had such tough days at work this week that last night we discussed that we will take care of ourselves this visit, even if it means not doing what they want to do and being overly accommodating. So today he calls me and says we'll be staying at sister's house Friday but she said she hoped we could see her daughter who's going to a sleepover Friday before we head to his brother's house Saturday night. I had no idea we were staying at brother's. Hubby had no idea. I assumed we'd stay at sister's house two nights or get a hotel. But brother and sister had it planned without consulting us. And hubby said okay to it. Here's the thing, brother's wife never comes to see us and now I have to go there anew and all over her new house and she's too good to come to our house. Only brother and the sons come to see us. She stays at home and goes to the casino. So, I wrote this down for hubby. I feel unimportant and not considered when you allow others to make travel arrangements for us, especially after we agreed to take care of ourselves and not do what others want us to do. Now I have to ooh and all over her house and she never comes down here. I suppose I'm being petty but the not considering my feelings after we just had the discussion is way bigger than the house thing. I'm pissed. I had an affair. Hubby had two affairs after mine. Aren't we both responsible for our own affairs? Do we both get to act out pain till kingdom come? We are not fighting about this, but I'd really like to forgive myself. I do need to know what I'm forgiving myself for. My affair was six years ago. I've forgiven him, having trouble with some current issues due to triggers but I don't think forgiveness covers that. His affairs weren't recent. We're coming up on four years ago. I'm not sure what we would even discuss in MC. I would like more openness on feelings from him. We need to appreciate having made it this far. Some people think I'm totally to blame for everything, not the ex of course, but others think each person responsible for own actions. I need to forgive myself, completely, and not blame myself for triggers or lowered expectations I have in the marriage simply because I did it first. We talked about this last night, how we want to be happier, that we wish it hadn't happened and that we are grateful for what we do have. It has been four years since his second affair and he's done a lot of soul searching and therapy since then. He says he's made his choice and he wants to be married to me, he loves me and is in love with me. If he feels otherwise, I wish he'd let me know. For both our sakes, I can tell you for sure I've had these same thoughts, good thing you make a ton of money, have a big body and are the father of my children because otherwise, I'm gone. Although, I haven't had those thoughts lately. It's more about the hard work we've both done since and how compassionate and kind we are to one another know that makes me stay. We had a very child-centered marriage and had no time for each other. I wasn't helped a lot with the kids, he worked long hours. When he came home, he sat there and ate for three hours. I was getting older and wanted validation. It comes down to me needing to be validated. Those are all excuses. Heck, if I would have said, I need more connection here he would have done it. Or at least tried. I didn't give him a chance and I take full responsibility for that. I let him know my feelings in the most destructive, hurtful way possible. Yesterday was a big sports day for hubby and his team was playing in a very big game. A female co-worker has children going to this university. Mind you, we now live 350 miles from there, so it's not like many people here are fans. So, he texted with her a few times yesterday and sent a picture of himself with his jersey on and she sent one back of her, individually and with her family and kids, having a party. We had a party as well. I'm not threatened by this woman, mainly because of her looks. But I still think it's pretty odd that he speaks about personal things with female co-workers, not to mention sharing pictures and texts. I'm sure he is being friendly or whatever, but she might interpret it differently. I just am stumped why he thinks this is appropriate. He showed me the pictures and the texts as they were coming in. But still, I am a former WW as well. I would never do this. I'm pretty much done telling him what to do. I might say that it's kind of a bad precedent to set. He thinks he's safe because she's not attractive. Okay, I did this once about three years ago, a male co-worker and I texted a couple times about our favorite drinks. I told hubby immediately and he was so pissed. He said, never underestimate the power of a text. So, I'm kind of perplexed here why he would do this. He shared the same excitement with me. 
I know people don't have to be attractive, that's for sure. I think former Wayward have to be very careful. What if she got the wrong impression? What if her husband walked by, saw her phone, with hubby's studly picture of himself with a jersey on? And just like, no, don't do that to people. So, we are doing really well. But last night he came home a little later, called, said he had been talking to our lake home neighbor. I said no problem. Came home and his eyes looked bloodshot and we talked and I said, by the way, where did you see this guy? He admitted he went to an open house where there was a bar and the guy was there, had a couple drinks, talked about our lake home situation. I know the group he went with is mixed gender and we have this agreement, kind of, of letting the other one knows if we go to a bar. Thing is, I had to ask him where he met him, he didn't volunteer it. But he stayed only for a half hour and said he knew I'd be upset but he wanted to talk to this guy. I asked this him if he would have told me where he was if I hadn't asked and he said he would have. I'm thinking maybe. Then he said why is this different? I have mixed gender appointments in my office or out at meetings all day long. I said well the alcohol thing is uncomfortable for me. And he met one of the O at one of these mixer things and he said he always says this. You don't understand my job. I said I understand it. I just don't like it. I asked how he would feel if my AP worked next door to me. One of his does. He said yeah, it would be hard. I said I'm giving as much as I can here. This kind of thing does not help matters. I wish I was more secure but I guess I'm not. I wish he could just go live his life and me not worry but I do. I guess the ultimate is that I would never do this as a former wayward wife. And I don't understand why he does. His lack of empathy for me is appalling. His choices are so different than mine I just don't get it. His job dictates that I guess he be out and about in the community and I hate that. But he doesn't have to be in this group. I'm sure things are fine and that he's not cheating. I should just be okay with all this, but I hate it, and when he does things like this I detach. I don't think of him as a serial cheater. We were married for 25 years before I cheated and then he had two revenge affair. He has been able to maintain fidelity before and since his affairs. That said, I do agree that drinking needs to be with the spouse. When I go out, I meet my girlfriend for an hour at about 5 p.m., and then he joins us at 6 or so. This has worked very well. I get my girl time and he is relieved of anxiety of me being out there alone because he is going too. I'm not going to hang out at business functions, even though he has invited me to some. He's not the boss of this group rather, he is one of all the bosses that get together to celebrate other business openings with ribbon cuttings. What I don't like is him telling me about the drinking after the fact. Here's what should have happened. He calls when he gets there and says, Hey, I'm here at a ribbon cutting, they're serving alcohol. I'm going to have one to two while I talk to, Lake home neighbor, and then I'll be home at 6.30. I would also like this, for him to do his job but not be as out there as he needs to be. In fact, I wish he would quit this stupid group. Assign it to someone else. Make less money if you have to. But is this reasonable of me? He could ask me to quit my workout club or anything like that. I mean, where is the line here? Controlling each other, letting each other just go live their life. I'm so freaking tired of all of this. Where is the happy medium? Can there be a normal after all we've been through? I don't know that we've brushed it aside. We were an MC for years. I don't know if he's cured. He's still an IC. I think if I don't cheat, he won't cheat. But I also think I've been punished enough for what I did. While our day-to-day -day interaction is good, and we have goals and plans together, these little things that happen that cause me to say what the hell. Wayward change because they take responsibility for what they've done and realize what they did was totally their own fault. Because he says he wouldn't have done it if I hadn't done it that is putting the onus on me, as if I have control over his actions. So therefore, he doesn't have to look at himself too closely. He gets to decide this and live his life accordingly. So, I am left to either accept this or move on. Currently living with it. I'm a teacher. We have four grown kids and a great history without the cheating. We bought a lake home this summer and it has been my sanctuary from here. This morning, we went to hot yoga together. I don't know many guys who would do that. So, this has been a very tough decision. My last IC said she admired hubby for staying at his job. I never went back to her. People just don't understand. Like you implied, it's trying to heal with the band-aid occasionally being ripped off. The hurt needs to be sealed permanently. The ex, I was at a hotel at a conference and had a couple drinks with friends. An acquaintance got into my hotel room. I said no three times. The next thing I knew I was on the bed with my pants off. I didn't know what happened. Very confused. I see and police and lawyer think I was unconscious, didn't do anything but then told hubby five days later, we called police. We tried to get them to take the case but said it would. But he said, she said kind of thing. We looked into filing civil charges. Lawyer said it would be hard to prove. MC said it would destroy us. Hubby very very angry we didn't pursue charges. Angry with me I opened the door, my friends were standing behind him so I thought I was safe. Angry with me I didn't scream. And on and on. So, when I caught hubby the second time he said, you got to have two so I got to have two. He has since said he said this in anger. I had to point out the fact that he's never said how sorry he felt that this happened to me. Our MC made him do that. Instead, it's, like it happened to him. Like my second betrayal. So, I think we act like we are beyond this and we are kind and loving and moving forward. It's just the little things that niggle at me. 
the commercial, the not moving, the thinking I should just accept seeing Botho from time to time. I'm not sure if I'm still being punished. He doesn't get it because he doesn't think he did anything wrong. He simply reacted to what I did. Intrinsic motivation to be a safe partner is not there. I saw on his messages that he texted a co-worker, cute little blonde, about something for their business. She answered that that was good because she was stressed about the business thing. He answered, no stressing aloud, or some other dumb emoticon. This is the guy who told me never underestimate the power of a text, straight from his IC. Do I think anything is going on? No. Do I think he needs to be less flirty? Yes, I just talked to my sister. She said this isn't a big thing. But you know what? All these little things, they add up and me loving him a little bit less. How does he not get that? I go back to this, he would be angry if I did this. This will be a difficult conversation. I just feel done, tired, wanting to lie on a beach for three months. And he didn't do anything really wrong. He just isn't being vigilant. Is it enough cause to throw in the towel? I don't know if he got over my affair. I'm not sure if I'm over his. Probably not. Still pissed about things on occasion. We both wish the past was different. But things are a lot better than they used to be. We can actually function now and plan things and enjoy them. It's really bad you guys. I talked to him and tried to express the intent message and how it could be misconstrued and misinterpreted and that he needs to protect himself. He listened and hugged me at the end. However, I said remember when you said not the underestimate the power of a text. What if someone texted me a smiley face emoticon? And he asked who and I said it didn't happen, but you texted the gal one. So, he got mad at me for using this crazy tactic to tell him about it. I apologized. This was all this morning, I got the silent treatment all night. I asked how long I was going to be punished. He said my therapist said your wife is torturing herself with all this. Last week you said you'd try to set me up with some woman to see what I'd do. You said you were done looking at my stuff and then looked at my phone. For the record I most certainly did not say that. I did say I trust him but have no idea what would happen if some woman came onto him. How would he react? That is nowhere close to what he said I said. I'm just stunned. He said his boss always sends emoticons. That it is a bank thing. I said I didn't know that. He said, do you need to? He said, when is this going to end? He said he wasn't the one who slept with two guys and expected things to be all better six months later. I said I didn't expect that but was doing the best to help him through it. I left, walked out the door. I had to get to work and we couldn't put this back together in five minutes. Plus, I was 553 he continues to classify my ex as sleeping with someone. We need help. We are both so angry. I am very sad. I expect that if I want to stay in the marriage, I'll have to trust him, let him do whatever he needs to do business-wise and carry on. I feel better. I'll do some writing after I saw I see today. She gave me some very good suggestions. I was right to go to him with a concern. I wasn't accusatory. I just needed to step back when he blew up and say, whoa, where is this coming from? I thought, we handled it well Tuesday night and then what happened that made things all different by Wednesday? I could have gotten all over in his stuff, hired a pie, whatever, but I didn't. I came to him because I trusted I could get more information from him and allay my fears, and that I didn't need to go behind his back to do it. So, I should ask him where the blow-up is coming from. It could be what I did reminded him of when I was hyper-vigilant. But I'm not there anymore. And yesterday I had a good day. I had no idea what I would come home to. There was actually a niggle of relief when I considered that this might be it. But it didn't seem to matter. I can have a good life with or without him. It was okay but I couldn't sleep last night. I'm going to write him a letter, maybe give it to him, said I. I see said it was okay if we never agree with what happened with my ex, I don't know about this, but that I can say it hurts when he brings up my past. We haven't talked as he had a trigger set that took us a while to get through. I wanted it to be about me helping him without my own stuff coming into it. I'm glad I did that. Why do we stay together? We love each other, are in love, have four kids, a strong friendship, have built a life together financially, have the same interests and hobbies and values, friends, a shared history. My comment, one day at a time, both of you need time to heal. It might take years for this marriage to grow strong again. The choice is yours. And